This short video is to give you some idea of the qualities, background and history of Vedic mathematics. Part 2 shows a comparison between the Vedic and conventional methods and so it brings out and illustrates the features which are described here of simplicity, brevity, directness and creativity. So first a brief history. The Sanskrit word Veda means knowledge, although the word also refers to certain ancient Indian writings. So the word itself simply means knowledge. The written Vedas are very old, passed on by word of mouth originally. And these texts were discovered about a hundred years ago by Western historians and they were amazed at the depth of knowledge that were contained in them. There were sections on ethics, metaphysics, psychology and so on. And there were also some sections on Ganita Sutras and that means mathematics. But when the scholars looked at these Ganita Sutras they couldn't discover any mathematics contained within them and so they rejected those sutras and they said this is nonsense. Around that time there was a brilliant Indian scholar Sri Bharati Krishna Tirtaji and he heard what the Western scholars were saying about the Vedic texts, about the Ganita Sutras and he determined to look into it. Here's a picture of him. And he reconstructed this system that was contained in the Ganita Sutras between 1911 and 1918. He wrote 16 books expounding the system, but these were lost and there are different stories about what happened to them. And in his old age, in 1958, he wrote one introductory volume called Vedic Mathematics, published in 1965 originally and now available. All subsequent study of Vedic Mathematics is based on this book. After Bharati Krishna's death, there was little interest in Vedic maths, strangely enough. A copy of his book was brought to London around 1970 and it was studied in London. Andrew Nicholas went to India four times, I believe, in the 1980s to try and find out what else was known about Vedic mathematics because we only had this one book. It's a picture of Andrew. Also, there was Jeremy Pickles, a brilliant mathematician who worked with us and myself, Kenneth Williams. We gave courses and talks in London, but there didn't seem to be any big effect, which we were hoping there would be. Educational establishments were <clears throat> unable to respond. It seems that the education system has a huge momentum and it's very difficult to change it. So we put together a course myself and Mark Gaskell, shown here, uh, which was published in 1998, which covers the national curriculum for England and Wales. The idea was to demonstrate that the Vedic system covers all of mathematics, at least for that age range that we covered. And we believe this course did that. Also in 1998, uh, the first website on Vedic mathematics was started, vedicmath.org, and a newsletter aimed well, both of these were aimed at bringing together people all around the world because there was a lot of interest but people were scattered all over the world and so we started those. Well things are changing a lot now there's a lot of interest in Vedic mathematics all around the world especially in India and the United States and there's a lot of research going on in new areas of mathematics applying the Vedic methods in new areas and also in education. Most recently, we have uh, teacher training courses starting at eGurukul.net. Hundreds of teachers are now being trained as teachers of the Vedic mathematics. Vera Stevens in Australia has developed, has been developing for many years, a system of what she calls pebble maths. And this complements beautifully, in fact, it is Vedic mathematics for the youngest children. Starting at the lowest grades, she's had huge successes in teaching her pebble maths to people of all kinds and ages and abilities. And most recently, the Vedic Math School has been set up by Rick Blum in Florida. And the idea here is to bring together teachers who can teach Vedic mathematics 
Uh, so this is a sort of one-stop website. If you want to learn Vedic maths, you go there and you can learn it. Now, looking at the features of the Vedic system, what are the main features? Well, number one has to be the coherence of the system. The whole system is much more unified and integrated than the conventional system of mathematics. The methods are reversible. So once you know how to multiply, you can reverse that and do division by the same simple method. And if you know how to square a number, you can find the square root simply by reversing that method. It also shows a much more interconnectedness between arithmetic and algebra. The system is also very flexible. The modern idea of mathematics is that it's very rigid. But this is not true of mathematics at all. It's a very flexible system and should be taught as such. There may be only one correct answer to a mathematical question, but there are many ways of arriving at that answer. Because the Vedic methods are so easy and so simple, it can be viewed as a system of mental mathematics. It doesn't have to be. The methods can be written down as well. But mental mathematics becomes easy, and that has various other effects. It improves memory, for example. It also promotes creativity, because once you have a system of mental mathematics, you begin to work more closely with the numbers and become more creative. You understand the numbers better. It seems to appeal to everyone. The artistic types who normally are put off mathematics like the Vedic mathematics because of its uh, flexibility and creativity. It appeals to all ages, all abilities, everyone. This also leads to increased mental agility. It sharpens the mental faculties through mental calculation. Efficient and fast, the methods are amazingly easy because it uses simple patterns that appeal to the mind, simple patterns, simple relationships. It's easy and fun. Children love it. And they ask, why weren't we taught this before? Another important feature is the special and general methods. In the Vedic system, there is always a general method. Uh, for example, if you want to multiply two numbers, there is a method that will multiply any two numbers or divide and so on. But in the Vedic system, we also have these special methods. And this really adds a new dimension because you can learn as many special methods as you like or not, as you wish. And some of those special methods are really striking and easy and they make it a lot of fun. Also, the sutras, Bharati Krishna, when he re reconstructed the system from the Vedic texts, discovered that mathematics is based on these 16 sutras. These sutras are given in word form, like, for example, vertically and crosswise. And they seem to describe the way that the mind works. So this is why, really, it's said that the 16 sutras cover, or the, the Vedic system covers all of mathematics, that's because the sutras describe the natural ways in which our mind works, 16 basic functions of mind, and therefore all of mathematics is constructed by these mental faculties. There's no other way that we construct mathematics except through our mental faculties. The qualities and features of the Vedic system just described suggest ways of teaching mathematics that fit naturally with those qualities and features. So a new view of mathematics education is emerging as a result. Especially important is that the flexibility and the variety of methods suggest a more creative approach to maths teaching and learning. This and the simplicity of the methods leads to increased interest and curiosity in the subject among children and to the development of mental agility. Lessons are enjoyed, mental maths becomes easy. So the rigid, flat approach that has led to so many problems in math education disappears and an enjoyable, creative style of math education is now possible. Maths can be used as a tool to develop the whole person, and it's ideally suited for this. Now you might like to take a look at part two of this introduction and see what Vedic maths can do and how much more efficient it is.